Marion Jordan Ellis, and I want to welcome you back to Five Minutes in the Word. If you're just now joining us, we're in a series on our identity. And this week, we're looking at 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 1 John was written by the Apostle John. He was one of the best friends of Jesus. He lived, walked every day, saw, beheld him, knew him. He was there at the crucifixion. He was also there at the empty tomb and he beheld Jesus and his resurrected body and he beheld him to go into heaven and he watched him ascend to the Father. Now, I, I think that's important because when John writes the words that we're gonna read today, okay, I want you to understand that he is an old man. He's like 90 years old. He's looking back on his life and he's pinning the quintessential truth that we need to know. He's an older man passing down to the younger generation what we need to hold on to, to cling to as the most important truth of our lives, but really the most important truth of our identity. So when you read his words, take that in heart, that he has been walking with the Lord for decades and wants to convey to us the most important thing. This verse actually starts with the word see that's not on here or behold may be in your translation. It says, see how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we would be called children of God. And this is what we are. And the reason the world does not know us is because it does not know him. Now, let's look at the content of this verse because it's really just so rich with different things. The first of all, it says, how great is the love? Now, it starts with the word behold, and it's as if John is like saying, open your eyes, see this, don't miss this, this is so important, see how great the love. Now, I love that he starts with the word love because when we think about God the Father, Sometimes we have this view of him as the judge, or sometimes we have this view of him that he has the standard of perfection. But what I want you to see is that what is propelling God the Father is this overwhelming love to reunite his children, to bring us back into fellowship with him. And in that love that pours out from his heart, he has lavished on us. Now, the word lavish is not one we use a lot. Can you think of a time when you were just absolutely just lavished in love? I think about the night I got engaged. My husband went through all this work to prepare a special night. He had special music, all of these things. He bought a ring. He had gone through all this work to lavish on me love. Now, when we think about what God did to make us his children, what the Apostle John is saying, he went from all eternity, this plan was in motion to bring forth the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, to lavish on you, not punishment or condemnation or rules, no, the opposite, to make you his children, to make you the object of love. And this is this lavish plan that was culminated in Christ at the cross where he paid it all and it was this lavish gift of love. Now when you see it that way, doesn't something happen in your heart? It changes your response. But the result of this lavish gift is that John says that we would be called children of God. Now see, before, before we received by faith this lavish gift, what were we? We were alienated from Father. We were not his children. We were by nature, it says in Ephesians, children of wrath. But what God did for us in Christ is he made us children of God, where we're heirs of the promises. We're heirs of the kingdom. We have an inheritance in him. We have become his very children. We're the family of God. And this is a lavish gift. Now, as a result of that, here's what happens. We're different from the world. The whole epistle of 1 John is reminding us who are children of God believers, you're gonna look different and act differently. You're gonna be different because now you're a child of God. This is a, the gift that you've been given of righteousness and love. It's gonna make you different than the world. You may stand out, you may be different. And that's the reason the world, when we say the world, we're not talking about the material world. We're talking about this world system that is opposed to God and Christ. Its agenda is opposed. And when we're God's children, now we don't fit in that anymore. It doesn't mean we don't love those. It doesn't mean we don't reach out and we don't try to be the light in the world, but it just means we are different. It's because we have been made children of God. Now, 
I love this verse. I hope you're memorizing it with us because what it does is it just reminds you the great extent and the lavish way that God the Father loves you. And I hope you just rest and relish in that today and in this week and don't let your mind or heart stray from the fact of who you are in Christ.